lupus and relationships the challenge of lupus and it's impactful it impacts on relationships okay i have a wonderful special guest here today desi ray is in the building how are you i'm good i'm good how you doing i'm good thank you she is all the way from texas Ugh, all the way child when i tell you i drove 16 hours <laughs> non-stop you. Yeah. we appreciate you for coming appreciate you for having you so what was that drive me. like coming down here crazy no it wasn't that bad it wasn't that bad i feel like i was just so determined to get here that i was I, like we didn't rest i got gas maybe five times <laughs> and then i was just back on the road i was like i'm coming to see my baby I'm coming to see my baby well we are oh. glad that you made it here safe yeah without you. further ado Desiree is the owner of beyond fearless llc a powerful youth developer and woman empowerment company that focus on the transition of healing journeys from, from girls to women. Her mission is to inspire youth and women to realize their full potential, creative self-confidence, and be empowered to succeed. With a rich background in social work and extensive experience in youth and family support, Desi Ray has developed a unique approach that combines particular strategies with compassion guidance. That's a mouthful. <laughs> that is a mouthful. Thank you. <laughs> that, you. You sound so incredible, but I had the chance to meet you and you are a very incredible person. You have a, have a nice, nice spirit. So we're going to pause and with so that. you, because let's not leave that out. Thank so you. you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. So before we continue this, this this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Bayou, what would you say about that? How did this even come about? Um, Beyond Fearless is my LLC. So when I first thought about becoming a business owner, I started a nonprofit. It was called Fearless Indeed. And the goal was to support youth as they um, transition out of foster care. Mm. And so I developed programs. I'm really, my passion is program development. Um event creating events and classes and workshops and that's like really my my baby but i have to i have to find a way to make it a business right um so my first my first business was a nonprofit fearless indeed um and then i realized that i can't um how do i say this <laughs> i was doing it all on my own and when you have a nonprofit you need a board you need people that's gonna volunteer for free. You Thank need you. you need to be Thank on me. you working Thank over me. the nine to five, like you working nonstop because essentially it's your passion. And so I found myself overworking and not able to. I did have a board, but not able to delegate. And it became overwhelming. And then I had kids, and then life just be life. So um I let some years go by. And then I started being on Thank you guys for the interruption. You had to. I didn't, see I didn't see no fingers move. She was still the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> now you're blaming you. No, because I know that sound came from you. But mm -hmm. okay. okay. Proceed, please. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then in 2019, I started Beyond Fearless. Um, and it's not a nonprofit because I feel like with just me being my just me and myself, I'm still able to offer the same type of services. A lot of what I do, like the services that I provide, I have puberty workshops. I have um, go-getter workshops for high school students. I have uh, life coaching services. I create programs. Like all of the things that I do is essentially stuff that a nonprofit would do because I'm passionate about it. I love doing it. Um, so I have to find a way to make money because I pray, God, please, please, Lord, let me make money doing what I love. It is my worst fear to get up and go to work every day and be miserable. I do not want that. So when I started Beyond Fearless, um, I just started developing and creating workshops and creating programs. And even if I didn't have one person come to my workshop, even if I didn't have one person buy my products, I would still doing it. You know what I mean? Because I love it. Yes, that's your passion. Yeah. 
And that is one of the reasons why I felt you would be a great addition to the show today because of your LLC that was a nonprofit that you turned into a not nonprofit. Yeah. I mean, it's because you understand the work, you understand the passion. Yeah. And we're going to all tie that into all the stressors. Yeah. that um, a healthy person like yourself versus someone with lupus um, go through dealing with all of that, right? Yeah. So now that it's a not nonprofit, what's the difference for you? What's the balance like? Oh, um, it's just me. So I'm the only balance. I'm the only person that I need to worry about paying, the only person I need to worry about, um, you know, getting out what I need to get out. Um, it is a little more stressful because I'm not, I have to wear every hat. I'm not a marketing person, but I'm, I bet you I'm going to learn some marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like, you know, I, I be on social media, but I could use a social media person. I could use a, an assistant or somebody who can, you know, do stuff, you know, with me, for me, a team of people. Um, so I think it's, it's a slope for me looking at what I want to accomplish, the vision that I have. It feels slow. But it's God's time and it's not mine. I can't be like, yeah, I want to create this program and it's going to August, August 3rd is going to happen. I mean, I can, but it takes it's a process. It's definitely a process. As long as you are consistent and you are diligently, work, diligently working, you're going to wake up one day and it's just going to be everything's going to be all in place. Yeah. It, it just takes the consistency, that dedication, that waking up early, going to bed late mm -hmm. to accomplish what it is that you need to accomplish because it can be overwhelming. Yeah. And speaking of overwhelming, when you are stressed while you're dealing with your LLC, what what happens? Like, how do you feel? How are you um, life balancing that? Do you have any children? Like, how does all that integrate into each other? Yeah, I do. I have two children. My daughter, she's 11 and my son is two. And so with me moving to Texas seven months ago, um, and I went by myself initially, and then my daughter came maybe four, three, three or four months later. Um, and we've been living slowly, working back up to our um like a foundation because I'm I'm not stable yet. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard people move to Texas and then they move back right away because it's really not easy. And I I psyched myself out for sure when I went up there like <laughs> Look at my resume. If you see, if I show you my resume and all of the things that I've done and all my accomplishments, you would think that I would be out down there running some stuff. But it takes time. It's a process. And it's, you know, <laughs> I just got to be patient because it's God's time and it's not mine. Yeah. So, like, so do, have you been stressed going through this process? Yeah. I stay stressed. I'm stressed now. I was nervous coming up here. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous coming down here. Um, Why was you nervous? Because I'm life is life. And when I tell you I might look together, I might look, you know, like I got it. But on the inside, I don't I have no idea what's going to come next. I have no idea how God is going to work this out. I was crying maybe not last night, but maybe the night before that, just in tears, just in tears because of the things that I can't control. You know what I mean? Whether it be life. Or whether it be with my business, whether it be with my marriage, you know, whether it be with my children. It was just, it's just a lot when you think about it, you know. So, I don't know. I want to do too much talking. But I think when I get stressed out, I just allow myself to cry. I allow myself to feel stressed. Um, I don't have many friends. Um, I was telling you about that the other day. Like, I don't be calling people when I'm sad, when I'm frustrated, angry. I don't really, I don't really too much rely on people. I just be praying and <laughs> letting it go. <laughs> You need um, you need an outside life, you know, like you need to be around people of your age that's doing grown folks things, whatever that may be. You need um, space outside of you, yeah. you know, somebody that you can lean on and somebody that can pour into you and give you all the love and give you the motivation and stuff that you need that because... Regardless of whether you have an autoimmune or you're healthy, you still need that because stress does affect us in all different ways. Yeah. So when you have been stressed, how, like have you been sick? Are you losing any weight? Any headaches? Fatigue? Like what are your symptoms being stressed? Now I'm sure that whatever I'm gonna say is not not to compare to anything that you go through because <laughs> it, I can just take a bath and I'll be fine. You know, I can just light a candle and I'll be fine. And it's I, I understand the difference between my stress and your stress. And so I want to I want to say that, you know, let that be known. I, I'm I'm empathetic to 
um, the difference in the experiences that you have when you stressed out. Um, when I get stressed out, I have I do have headaches. Um, I drink coffee and that's not that good of a thing because then when I don't want to drink it, I get headaches. Withdrawals be for real. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> go ahead. It's, this this you are our special <laughs> guest. You we 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 on your time, baby. Go ahead. I'm sorry, we, I'm all over the place. No, you, it's okay. This is what this show is all about. Is um, unapologetic, unapologetically, it's authentic. It's the raw you, raw us. So yeah. let it out. Let it out. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, that's some of the things I what happens to me when I get stressed. You know. Nothing too major, and you know, it get I get past it. I just gotta pray and rest. Remember to like take a break, and because I think about that, it's not my time. And if I remember that, then I don't, I can't do nothing about it. I can't control it. I might as well just let it let it be. You know, it's always the saying when you develop a popcorn life that it goes just that fast mm -hmm. and when it takes time to create with the clay and you sculpture and you you milk it with love and cater to it like your baby is yeah. going to last forever yeah so you know think of it in that manner because anything in life that's worth having is going to take time regardless yeah. of whatever that may be whether yeah. it's a degree your llc you planning a trip what losing weight anything short term long term you have to pour into it and if you continue to do what you're supposed to do and not cheat the process you yeah. definitely will reap the benefits i agree you I definitely agree will reap the benefits. you can cannot not reap the benefits right you know you just can't cheat yeah people like to cheat <laughs> cuz we do live in a popcorn society like everything is like now people don't like to wait you you do you do so, do that yeah so your um your your program that you have right mm -hmm. what got you into that program what made you want to just wake up and create something like that with the youth um i've always worked with youth even when i was younger um i started off as a health educator with the children's health education center <laughs> i don't know if y'all remember that to now. Remember. <laughs> <Girl>. <laughs> i don't but so when you okay this, i'm gonna tell you what it is because now people i'm getting old and people have no idea what i'm talking about no. so when you was younger mm -hmm. in school you went to you went on a field trip to this place and inside this place they have big old large toothbrushes and one room and then you would sit on like stairs and like they would present to you in the front and it would be like big production <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what i'm talking about, what I'm talking about. <laughs> anybody know what she's talking about i don't know what she's talking about you know what she's talking about nah, it's, it's cool <laughs> <laughs> the children's health education center that's where i became that's where i was in high school teaching young people about healthy bodies um eating healthy brushing your teeth you know safety sex education that type of stuff I'm really going to have to look that up because I don't know what that is. Yeah. It was in a building where um, we not we don't got to do that. We don't got to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reminiscing at this point. Okay. Um, but yeah, like my whole life, I've never not been helping people. I've never not, you know, either educating or um, uh, advocating for or um, volunteering for. Um, that's my whole life. So. So would you say that's your calling? Yeah. I would love doing it. I would. I absolutely love it. That's the. I would do it for free. <laughs> I have been doing it a lot free. of a lot of young girls need that. They just need that in today's world. You know, you got mothers that are working. That's bosses. That's that's bosses and working and being an entrepreneur and a mother and a whole bunch of other stuff. And sometimes. You know, slip through the cracks sometimes with mm -hmm. some people, children that doesn't get the chance to teach them everything that they need to learn. So yeah. to have people like you to fill in, I think that's pretty dope. Yeah, so I, I wish you all the best in your growth and development and in your um, project that you have going on. Thank you. I really appreciate that. No, seriously. Is you are a life mind? giver. I've noticed <laughs> that about you. You just speak life. I love it. Thank you. I, listen. People do it to me, so it makes it easy for me to love on other people. When people, yeah. when you are loved on properly, mm -hmm. it exudes out. Mm -hmm. When you're not, it exudes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I'm taken care of, I can take care of other people with ease. That's true. So you your soft girl era. Okay. You better be soft <laughs> and giving love and stuff. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so what have you learned about yourself through this transition?
I learned that I still got learning to do. <laughs> um, Elaborate on that. What, what do that actually mean? Um, let me, let me. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. I, it's, it's a non never ending learning journey. Um, this thing that we call life. And I feel like that's what makes me a good life coach to young people because I'm not perfect and I don't claim to be perfect and I don't want to be perfect. Like perfect I just perfectly. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. Yeah. I yeah. just want to do what God told me to do. I just want to wake up and feel like I'm being obedient. Um, but sometimes it don't happen like that. And you do the opposite of what you're supposed to do. And then you learn that lesson. Absolutely. You're supposed to learn that lesson. Some people don't. Some people just keep repeating the same cycle. And I'm trying to um, be intentional about putting God at the center of everything that I do. So I love that. Yeah. I can. Yeah. Like. It is a, for me, too. It's a, it's, it's a never ending cycle. Yeah. I can learn everything it is that I think that I know about lupus and skin and hair, but it's always something new. It's always yeah. something viewing. It's always different tests. It's always different studies. It's always something. Yeah. So it's very important to continue the education while going through journeys so you can kind of like, so you can be up on everything. Yeah. Because things get old. Which That's is crazy, true. right? You yeah. just learning and knowing about like the back of your hand, and that information is already up. Yeah. But you got to be able to know that to go into the new information and to deliver that as well. That's true. So I totally understand what you're saying when you say that. Yeah. So how do you question? <laughs> how do you go from and not go from? How do you incorporate what you learn from you know a textbook or studying research about lupus and then? also incorporate what you experience and do they clash ever do they always go to do they always match you know like this is what i read about and this is exactly what i'm experiencing okay um that was a fully loaded question yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so right. the thing is about this <laughs> <laughs> so the thing about take the textbook like um if it's something interesting i'm going to read it Anything that's all on you, anything is interesting to me. So I read it, right? Yeah. Some parts of it does, um, I, I, I understand it. I experience, I know about it. Mm -hmm. Some parts it's like, what? Never, unheard of, right? Okay. So that's the textbook version of it. Um, things that my doctor told me and things that he prescribed or the, the regiments or the diets that I've gone... I have to do what works best for me. Mm -hmm. So I will do what I'm told. I will incorporate what I read, but I will play with it with myself mm -hmm. because doctors is only as good as they study. And then mm -hmm. they only as good as the information that is put out to them. A yeah. great, wonderful doctor studies outside of his practice. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have to play with your medication yeah. to know what's best for you. Yeah. And I'm a person that has done that because if I didn't, I'll have a, crap load of medications that I'll be taking every day mm -hmm. but I I did it so I weaned myself on, off of a lot of different type of medications mm -hmm. so I know how long I can indulge me play around and not do the right thing how you said because yeah. my body will automatically feel it because I do right 95% of the time yeah and when I do wrong I feel it right away but I know exactly what to do and how long to do it in order to get myself back on the right track when, yeah. before I get sick, of, sick, if that makes sense. That makes 100%. In fact, when you said that, it made me think right away of when you love yourself, when you value yourself, when you take care of yourself, it becomes that much easier to identify when other people are not. Yeah, because um, I went through the, the the extreme fatigue. I went through, you know, the body aches, the muscle pain, mm -hmm. the joint pain. I went through all of that. Yeah. And I noticed when I take care of myself, I don't feel any of that pain. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to feel crappy, right? right? So I'm like, okay, I know I can do this, this, and this. That's about three days. Then mm -hmm. I got to get back on my detox or I got to go back to being healthy, right? Okay. Because I still want to have a quality of life. I still want right. to be with my friends. I have still want to live. I still want to be out in the world. I got kids. Yeah. You know, I still want to strive for everything that I'm striving for. So I do everything in moderation. Okay. You don't have to be on this just green path the whole entire time. You can live, yeah. but you got to be able to come back to it. You got to 
pay attention. You gotta pay attention. You gotta listen to your body. Your body is, will speak to you. Yeah. Your body will tell you what's wrong with you. It okay. really would. And you have to listen. Yeah. So if you listen, you'll be okay. You'll be all right. And it works for me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just like you. When you're yeah. stressed, your headaches. Yeah. Your headaches tell you that you stress. So yeah. you need to decrease or relax yourself or put something away for that day and mm -hmm. you'll be fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. So our body speaks to us. Yeah. That's dope. Yep, our body speaks to us. So yeah. you got to listen. How do you envision your future as a single woman and mother? <laughs> I, to be honest, we I, this probably gonna go off subject a little bit, but I don't, I don't imagine myself being single for long. Let me ask you this: <laughs> I don't think that's gonna be a possibility. So, because you have a healthy relationship with the father mm -hmm. of the children, mm -hmm. do you consider that being single just because y'all are not solely defined as a couple? Okay, wait, ask that again. I'm sorry. Because you guys don't have a title mm -hmm. on being together, right. do you still consider being a single parent? Yeah. You do? Okay. Yeah. Um, I think instead of saying single parent, I should say co-parenting. Um, because we are not under one roof. And it's a lot of things that happens when there was me that he doesn't see. Um, and it's not, it's not like, oh, well, they ate, you know, this today. It's more like this week this is all that happened with the kids and this is everything that you know they needed and it was just me that had to do it now i can call you and ask for advice or i can you know send me some money or whatever but it's me i'm the only one you know what i mean and as long as we're separated like that it's just single single parenting so i got a is twist to mean? it <laughs> yes so i got a twist to it so what if you had a husband that was on the road and he was gone weeks on and out of time mm -hmm. Do you consider that being single yeah. still? You Parenting, not single in a relationship. If you, if y'all marry, y'all have um, an agreement and y'all are on the same page with that type of relationship where he gone however long, um, then and that, that works for you, that's okay for that marriage. That's okay for that relationship. But when it comes to parenting, that, that mom or whoever stays home, you said the father go out. Or the, or, or, or the woman it's, or women, the woman. it's women people it's, it's women that's on the road too so i want to leave them out so vice versa yeah would I, that is you consider that being single yeah a parenting single parent because you're the one doing it you're the you know how much it takes to parent a child it's not just buying them stuff giving them things you have to teach you have to be patient you have to guide you have to discipline you have to it's all it's the emotional it's the mental it's the physical things that go into making sure that you're doing it right breaking generational curses making sure that you are not taking out your stress and your frustrations on your children you have to be intentional and that's hard <laughs> that's so if i'm here by myself i don't care if you're my husband or not if you gone for two or three weeks at a time i'm a single parent okay so what about having the active parent whichever role the man or the woman having the active parent in the home mm -hmm. But you're one person is like the money that, that brings in the money. And the other person is the disciplinary, the one that deals with the children most. Because no two parents that I know deal with their children equally. It's one that tends to deal with them more than the other parent. Mm -hmm. So how do you, would you still consider that being single? I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I think, I think when both parents are in the home. Um, and I get it like outside of work hours or like, you know, events or in business stuff. When we come home, we sleep together. We have family meetings. We have dinner together like that under one roof to me is coping. It's like we together, even parenting. if you are the authority figure mm -hmm. like you okay. yeah. because it's different households that structure for different, you know, different ways. And yeah. they kind of do what kind of works for them. I so, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so how does I your parenting work? How do you with you? Are you with? father of no mother? okay so i am single um but i never even though people have just like you are i never felt like a single parent mm -hmm. i never felt like a single parent a because blessing. they have always been there like mm -hmm. if i needed a break i can get a break if i want to go on a trip i can go on a trip i never not had to do something because i had children Mm. Like I hear so many stories about oh, I couldn't go back to school or I couldn't do this or I can't take trips. Like I thank you, Lord. I've been so blessed. I never gave up 
any of my life yeah. because I have children. You know what's crazy? I almost asked you if you had kids. Everybody don't think like, I have are you, kids. Are you a parent because you are so <laughs> busy? Like, when do you find time to be a mother? I'm just... That is crazy. A lot of people don't think I have kids. Uh, I have two. My son is 19. Okay. And my what? daughter, he's 19. How old are you? <sighs> you my... No, no. She playing. She playing. <laughs> I got a 19 year old prince and I have a 13 year old princess. Okay. Um. And wow, you look amazing. Thank you. You look too. You look amazing too. My daughter, 11. I don't know. What that's. <laughs> oh, that's the oldest. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I have the, the grandparents are very active. Okay. Dad has always been active. Like, you know, and as he got older and he's getting older, he's kind of doing his own thing. Yeah. Um, but I'm still mom. Like I like I just spoke, my daughter just got back the other day. She's normally gone for the summers. Um, so she just got back the other day and we spent time together. But it's we have an understanding. I tell them if I'm working too much, mm -hmm. let me know. No, yeah. I'll stay home. That's so beautiful. I have an open community because I'm tunnel vision. Like when I'm working mm -hmm. on a project or I'm doing my homework or something like that, I'm just doing it. If I know that I fed y'all, I know that I kissed y'all, I know that I loved on y'all, I know that everything is good. My mental, y'all on my way. Y'all old enough, right? Y'all should be able to articulate. But most kids can't. Yeah. They don't. So that's something I taught them to okay. always, you know, let me know if you want to do something. You know, yeah. let me know if you want to just come lay up on me or just come do, you know, yeah. let me know so I can know. Yeah. So um, it's been one time throughout my daughter's entire life. Last year, she asked me, Mom, are you going to work? And I'm like, do you not want me to go work? And I was already done with my first job I was going in for overtime yeah. and then she was like mm, I'm like you want me to stay home she was like yeah I said well what's the difference because when I'm in the house you're still in your room 95% right. of the time <laughs> you ain't bother me, so. right she was like well it's just different because I know that you're here yeah say less right I said I gave her a whole week yeah I just went to work regular hours and I didn't do my overtime hours yeah and so I constantly remind her, like, if it's something that you want to do, if I am too busy for something, you got to come to me and you got to let me know. Yeah. Because I you're 13 now, you're 19. Yeah. So that's that's what I do. That's great that um, you do that. Because if I don't, it's so easy to get tied up into my own thing because I want to mm -hmm. be successful. Mm -hmm. I, and being successful is because, because of them. Mm -hmm. I want to take care of them. Yeah. Um, abundantly i don't want to be rich i want to be wealthy you know what i'm saying i want to yeah. get back to the community i want to do all of that mm -hmm. and so i have to work like yeah. i'm working and doing what i'm doing so in the next couple of years i cannot do anything yeah i got a question yeah two questions actually the first one is about the co-parenting and um you said i'm so blessed because i've even though you're not together that he, you've never felt without you've always had the support do you feel like because i you know all men ain't that special. Like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Some <laughs> men just don't think like, oh, let me be a constant support. Let me be a, let me be present more because, you know, some men don't have that. I'm not saying mine don't. My, 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 <laughs> he's awesome. But there are men who aren't like that. And so do you feel like that he has taken on this um, role of being supportive the way that he is because of lupus? Or do you think that's just who he is? You know what? I never asked him that question, but before we became a child, we had an agreement and we had a discussion. Yeah. And the agreement was no matter if we were together or not, he will always take care of us. So whether I have a man or whatever, he will always take care of us. Yeah. So he's going to be there when I'm sick. He's going to Bless fill in him. if I need him to, like whatever the situation may be. Yeah. Um. So that's a discussion that we had before we had um them and that's what they've been doing the whole entire time. Okay. That child. now I'm not gonna sit here and say it's just like a fairy tale. We had our ups and our downs, but he yeah. never not never not been there. Yeah. So yeah. and that's kind of what that was. That that is exactly what that is. I you just hit the hand clap on that. <laughs> <laughs> hand that's exactly on what now. that is. That's amazing. Because I'm like lie. My fear was I don't want to have children and not be able to get my hair done. I'd be able to get my nails done. I'd be able yeah. to go kick it like I, I that was no, yeah. no, it's two of us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I had a discussion at a very young age. Yeah, that's he helpful. kept that's to helpful. it. Yeah, 
Okay, well, let me know if you got any brothers. I'm just, <laughs> just playing. I'll just you a mess. <laughs> Um, what other question? Oh. I had another question. Okay, um, okay. Okay, so thinking about your parenthood, um, and you said like whenever they need you to, whenever they ask, you gonna be home, you're gonna stay home, do whatever they need. Do you feel like that um you have the luxury to do that because of Lupus? Like you're cho- like choosing life, you know what I mean? Like I'm choosing because to be honest, anything can happen to anybody at any time. Correct. And I'm not going to spend my life working so hard that I miss my children's lives. You know what I mean? Do you think that's increased, the th- that thought increased because of lupus? Or do you think that is just the way of life anyway? Because of my lupus, I wanted my children to remember me. Because I wasn't supposed to have kids. They mm-hmm. told me not to have kids. Okay. So when I had them, I made sure I did, I, I did everything possible. Like, I was there from day one. It was nothing that we didn't do. It was nothing that I didn't do. It was nothing that they didn't see. Like, I made sure I was active with them at a very young age to a point where um, it's kind of negative when you turn your kids on to a lot at a young age. There's mm-hmm. really nothing for them to do when they get older mm-hmm. because they're so used to everything already, traveling and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I did that because of that because I wanted to make me- I wanted memories because who knows, like you said, what's gonna happen. So I want them to have memories of who I am. Of course. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the answer to your question. Okay. That's well, good. That's it. Um, what aspects? of your previous relationship do you want to carry forward and what do you wish to leave behind um i love the idea that i'm a good communicator what um, makes you a good communicator you know everybody i think i'm that. a good <laughs> <laughs> i try to be a good communicator um i listen um i have good eye contact you do? Yeah. You I think so. You think I do? <laughs> yes, you do. Um, I try to think about other people's feelings when I'm talking. So I want to make sure that you understand me. I want to make sure that you're not upset about what I'm saying. This That actually stems from some trauma. Not trauma, but just um, people pleasing. I'm, I was a big, big, big people pleaser. And I was always just, yes what you need. Yep. Yep. And at first it was like, I love helping people. And then it became like, "Mm, it's not good for me. I have to be able to say no, not because I don't want to help, but because I need to feel like I'm protecting me. You know what I mean? When I give, 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 it just, yeah. Um, But yeah, I think all of those things make me a good communicator. Now, the other thing on the other flip side of that is that um, I would not want to so my the flaw that I feel like I had that I'm working on, um, I don't listen. Not that I'm not hearing you, but that I'm listening because I'm formulating something in my head about what you're saying. Um, gotcha. So I heard what I wanted to hear. So you're listening to respond, not listening to understand. Sometimes, yeah. Yep. So you're defensive. Not not really defensive. Um, it, it's almost like my way or the highway. Oh. But I don't say it. I just think <laughs> it just be in my head. Like, well, at least yeah, you but I'm right. With it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a good thing. I'm working on it. I'm not always right, but I think I'm always right. And why do you feel that way? Because I've always been right. <laughs> 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 okay. It just turns out that I'm right, but I can't, you can't go into no relationship or no conversation with that mindset. Cause then you'll respond that way. You definitely and people will. will look at you like you ain't the smartest person in the world. Like, calm down, relax. You can be wrong sometimes. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, which part of that would you leave behind? All of, take with- oh. All of it. All of it. I, I want to. I'm trying to refresh. I'm trying to restart, renew who I need to be. I'm trying to figure out me again. So let's go with I am going to figure out me. I am going, I am to, going to fresh. Yes. Because if you say that, I believe in word of affirmation. So if you say it out loud, you speak to the universe, you start yeah. be, you start acting like what you're saying, right? Yeah. So let's take a pause and look at some of these comments. Tom, I can't see because of the light. Hello, cuz how are you doing? Thank you for tuning in. I would love to be a guest. Please send me an inbox. Hey, TG. 
Love this. So powerful for a woman. Yes, it, it is. It yeah. absolutely is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. So, so you would like to leave all of that behind. So why wouldn't you want to be a great communicator? Um, not that I wouldn't, the, the, oh, okay. So you meant like, which part of that? Yeah, I would, I would want to stay a great communicator. I would want to continue practicing, um, communicating for, with different people for, you know, for different people is different for, I believe that is different talking to you than it is talking to Tom or different, Absolutely. you know, talking to my children. So I want to continue and grow, um, with the way I communicate. I want to leave behind the part where I'm not a good listener, where I think I'm right <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Um, and that's not even for me. It's not if if I lived in the world by myself, I would not change nothing because I don't affect. It's not affecting anybody. But I would want to be mindful of how I'm coming off to people. I love that. So when you are being mindful of how you coming off, are you able to express yourself authentically? Meaning, are you able to get what you need to get out the way you need it to get out, or do you have to alter it so much that it's watered down and it's not even the point that you're trying to make? Um, what I do, I feel like I'm pretty authentic to me when I talk, when I speak, when I go places. Um, I think for the most part, I might just, um, over, over explain or okay. overly, um, be in, to in tune with your emotions. And that's the people pleasing side of me trying to come out. Like, I don't want to offend nobody. I don't want to make nobody feel bad. I don't want to, I want to make sure that you understand me, but People going to misunderstand you no matter how you say it, when you say it. They're going to like you if you if they like you or not. They it's, It don't matter, you know. Absolutely. So it's all like, with the mindset. Yeah. It's your mindset. It, it's, if your mindset is right, then your feet will follow. I really mm. absolutely believe in that. I like um, that. I, like I want to thank um, Mikhail. Um, that's my coach, my business partner as well. But yeah. she talks so much about Mickey? mindset, Mickey. Yeah, yeah. She's awesome. she talks so much about mindset, and I truly believe that I it, it really is. You got to change how you think and how you perceive things mm -hmm. because if you do, then you can start doing better and yeah. living your life better and probably knocking down some of them doors that's been closed for quite some time, right? Mm -hmm. So, I believe in mindset. How do you feel like I'm sorry? No, got a question. Okay. Oh. <laughs> How do you feel like you have been because I agree about the mindset and I also feel like it takes practice, right? Yeah. And so from coming from like trauma or like a you know having lupus or just experiencing a lot of the things that are that are not so great of a mindset, you know, how do you come into having a strength, you know, based mindset or a power powerhouse mindset or positive, you know, I can do whatever. I can do all things other than like through Christ who strengthens me. But how do you stay on that path of that mindset? Well, um, short story. When I first got diagnosed, um, I was rebellious. I didn't know what I had, even though they told me what I had, you know. Um, it wasn't until that I started, until I accepted what I had to start doing better, right? So when you say powerhouse, the things that I went through when I got diagnosed, I'm sure if God wanted to take me through some more stuff that was worse than that he could, but I don't feel like there is going to be nothing terrible than what I already went through. And he has me here for a reason. Um, I didn't like anything about it. You know, I didn't wake up one day. Well, I didn't want to start, you know, lupus has no face. Right. That's a nonprofit. Nonprofits are hard, you know, extremely hard. I'm a person that wants to see things coming in quickly, mm -hmm. regularly, you know, and I just woke up like that. Yeah. And it never left my it never left my mind. So I knew God had put it on me to do it. So I feel I, I'm actually I wouldn't change this, honestly, yeah. because people that say like, oh, this person had it not doing so well. This person in the hospital, this person in a wheelchair and so on and so forth. I feel like God gave me this to be a voice mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. other people. And, you know, um, now that I accept it, what I have and um, it, it strengthens me mm -hmm. because nothing that I can possibly go through school, work people you can never knock me down how lupus has knocked me down yeah you can okay. never make me Say feel that. yeah broken how lupus has made me feel mm -hmm. broken nobody on this earth can put me in a situation that'll be worse than what i went through when i was a younger child yeah so to me if i wake up i'm happy i'm, blessed. I'm yeah. happy and everything else is like 
you know, when I talk to my people or whoever, whether it's work, friends, whatever, I always, it's not that bad. It can be yeah. worse. And I truly mean what I say, because if you woke up and you got another chance to do mm -hmm. it better than you did yesterday, yeah. you need to be blessed at that. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what happened yesterday. We cannot control what happened, mm -hmm. but we can change what's about to come, right? Yeah. We can continue our path positively. We can we can look at things different, go mm -hmm. a different route, mm -hmm. be more mindful, um, yeah. be more educated on whatever it is that we're doing, mm -hmm. have a better chance to listen to our intuition because our body speaks to us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So people like to, people like to be mad. I always say that people like to be mad. You yeah. there's no way that you're mad at what I did to you an hour later. You are right. choosing mm. to be mad. Ooh, you're choosing to be mad. No choice. Like I I, I cannot emphasize this so much when people are still mad. Mm -hmm. You cannot be that mad. Right. That's a choice. Yeah. You know, so people are their own worst enemy. People mm -hmm. are their own worst enemy. They they get in their own way. It's yeah. called self sabotage. Mm -hmm. And I would yeah. never do that. Yeah. I would never do that. Not willingly knowing that I'm self sabotaging myself. So I totally understand how you have come to be with this mindset of I, I woke up, I'm good. Yeah, because you've been through so much. Nothing came like what? What now? What's worse? I can I got this. Like you know what I mean. So I totally understand that. Now, how would you encourage people? So for me, I work with young people, and this is just the beginning of life. And to them, if it's something bad happens, it's the end of the world. Like oh my god, yes. but life is still going. Life you gonna you got way more years of struggle and challenge because you're still learning. Now, how do you convince people to have that mindset? when they haven't experienced anything yet. Well, to us as grown people, we've experienced, you know, lupus, we've experienced marriage, divorce, we've, we've experienced C-sections and childbirth, we've experienced so many things, but that's what keeps us. You know, I, I can handle anything, I've been through that, I can handle it. How do you convince people, young people specifically, to maintain that mindset? You know, I like to do the mirror thing, right? <clears throat> I had one Pacific girl that she was so pretty on the outside, very pretty young girl. But she was insecure. She felt ugly and all is like you said, her, her world was gone if any little thing happened, especially messing with boys, right? I will tell her, like, look in the mirror. What do you see? What do you see? You cannot lie to yourself. What do you actually see? I will leave her in there and I will go back five minutes later and I will ask her and it will break. It broke her down. Mm -hmm. and you have to cry, right? You mm -hmm. have to cry, whether it's happy tears, sad tears or breaking through tears, right? You have to cry. And she understood that what she was in her brain, making herself think these thoughts, yeah. it wasn't really that. Yeah. But it's an ongoing thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's homework for them, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So my thing is, I will have them look at themselves, write it down, ask yourself, is it, is it really that bad? What can you change? What can you not change? Mm -hmm. Let's focus on this. Yep. Because sometimes when you are in a child's face, from my experience, and you talking to them and you giving them that raw, and you like, look, mm -hmm. they understand that. Mm -hmm. They understand that, at least the ones I dealt with. Yeah. So I feel like you have to be authentic, yeah. hard, but not too much overbearing with them and, and have them look at what it really is. Yeah. Are you making this up or is this really really is? Because sometimes kids make up things in their own head, right? Yeah. And it's not the truth. So look at yourself in the mirror. That's yeah. my whole thing. Okay. Look at yourself in the mirror. I like that. I do it to this work. day and I'm grown. Right. Okay. Listen, when I tell you I have full conversations with myself, <laughs> <laughs> I, sometimes, you know, you got to make up the situation before it happens so that you prepare for it. <laughs> that might not be the best way to, to do it, but if it works. That's what that's what I got to do. I, I've got to prepare myself. So and you there, you, you said you were there seven months. That's mm -hmm. that's a that's majority of people fear moving to another city and state. Yeah. Yeah. It's there. It's gonna get better day after day after day. But especially if you continue working, I'm I'm sure you met some amazing people in Texas so far, yeah, right? They sure. probably got some amazing jobs down there that pay way better than here. Mm. Uh, okay, mm. I don't know. Texas, <laughs> if you're listening, I need a job. Okay, don't don't play with me. I got skills. Don't don't try to don't do too much. Nah, well, we got to knock on some of their doors, okay. write them some letters. Okay, and down here it's so different. Like the process of me going, getting a job, getting a place, like I'm still, it's a slow transition, which is, it can be discouraging, but also, um, I think I'm, I think I'm okay. 
you know, Vera Wayne, please, yeah, I think that's her name, Vera Wayne. Um, she didn't become a designer until she was like 40. Yeah. 40 years old. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You look at some of that stuff and you just be like, you never see like the behind the scenes that all these rappers do. They just pop out and they mm -hmm. hop and they, they everywhere, all on social media. You can't flip a page without seeing them. Right. But you know how much work they put in mm -hmm. before they pop out? Yeah. That's all I say. Look at People that's just popping out, they've been working for 10 years. Yeah, had to to get here. You can't just so what I'm I said it to say, like your breakthrough is gonna come. Like yeah. continue doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. how you doing it. Yeah, you're gonna wake up one day and you're gonna be living your best life. That's okay. gonna probably be the you best better speak you that on in my life. Like for real. Right. And that's what people don't understand. Like, I'm just doing this, I'm being consistent. How long you've been consistent? Only a month. That's not enough. Yeah. As far as me living in Texas, I I definitely agree. I'm I'm in a touching and agreeing with you on that because I'm that that foundation is there. I just need to be patient while I build it. You know what I mean? And get some friends. Like just don't get any type of energy, right? Right. You you know what feels good. Yeah. And all your friends is not meant for everything. Right. You might have a drinking friend. You might have a I don't know, going out friend, a, a house summer party friend, whatever, yeah. a friend with kids is going to be with you and your daughter. Yeah. All your friends is not meant for everything, but get be out, out there, there. Mm -hmm. you know, and yeah, because it get lonely. That's what I've been trying to do, child. No, it gets lonely. <laughs> <laughs> On one hand, loneliness is, is not that great, but then in my at least in my solitude i pray i get my business done the reason why i can speak on my events my i can speak on my workshops is because i've been doing the work in the background so i agree <laughs> i will wholeheartedly it's gonna come um and one day you're gonna see me pop out maybe it's people who look at me now and think i'm popped out you know think i'm doing everything and let but them think it let, go ahead thank you child let them think thank it you. How can you nurture and prioritize your own well-being during the time of change? Um, prioritize. I can um, make sure. So one of the things that I do, I'm just going to whip it out. Because whip it out. Whip it out. So this is my baby. Um, this is the third edition. I've done this for three years. This is God's plan. It's a journaling. I cannot journaling wait to I get mine. It's so beautiful, you guys. Thank Where can you. they find us at before you get into it? Um, so I am selling these. I will have to send a link. I posted on my Facebook and my Instagram before. Um, the thing is, it's not cheap. It's not cheap, and I just want to make that known now. This this has been every time I create another um planner, it takes a year for me to do it. Um, I'll let you look at it while you... Tom, can <laughs> you please drop the link in there for them to get it? <laughs> um, the planner is $95. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but if you can't afford it, don't even be... Don't feel no type of way. It's meant for who it's meant for. Um, this planner is created for people to... Do I get the look? Mm-hmm. Okay. You, don't be telling it's, my it's personal exclusive. business up it's in there exclusive. now. <laughs> exclusive on Lupus Has No Face podcast. I love it. Um, it's intended for people to be intentional about putting God at the center of their plans. You wake up every day, you own your business, you operate your business, you go to work, you have kids, you so many things, and 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 if you really trust that God is the guider of your life, like He's is His plan and not yours, then you need to have a, a God's plan Christian journal and planner, okay? Because there are scriptures, there are Journal pages where you reflect on your gratitude. You reflect on who God, your faith, prayers, um, week, weekly and monthly um, pages where you can write down your goals for the day um, and check them off as you accomplish them. What else? Blank pages for you to put, you know, doodle or write down, jot notes when you have a phone call and you need to remember something. Um, the thing is, not everybody likes physical planners like the whole, you know, taking it everywhere. Um, so for those people, I suggest that when you're working, you leave it on your desk at work, leave it in your home office. And every day you check in every morning, you check in and make sure that your mind is on God so that he can deposit into you what you need to. Oh. A lot of us are, are angry, frustrated, stressed out, irritated, annoyed, like we feel these feelings and it, it takes us off track. 
real easy. I, I'm speaking on my behalf. It takes me off track when I don't put God at the center. What, like when I speak or when I act or when I do stuff, and it's not from a place of God wanted me to do that, it, I feel lost. And then I end up saying, God, what do you want me to do, God? Well, how do you want me to handle this? Well, mm. if you had listened when I told you to, you would know what to do next. <laughs> I love it's that. Listen, a, it's such a powerful thing. And I don't know, maybe it's just me who, like, I'm locked in. I don't care if nobody ever buy one. That right there saved my life. It it, it looked like she's locked in from all the stuff that I read. This, I, I love it because it's big. The print is very big. It has everything that you need to do to it. It has a calendar, weekly planner, finances, where our money is going, what we need to cut out. This is dope. And I don't think it's too pricey because you go to Office Depot, <laughs> they up there too. So who is yeah. for is who is for. Yeah. This is beautiful. Thank you. This is beautiful. We are going to drop the link in the ch um, chat to, to um, purchase one of these beautiful God plan uh, journals from Desiree, you guys. Thank you. Make sure you guys for support. supporting me. Yeah, it's definitely support at this point. Um, but to be honest, it's, it's not about me. Like, yes, I'm selling it, but it's not about me. I'm whew, don't make, don't get me to cry. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in people's, spiritual health and wealth you mm. know what i mean my one of my prayers that i pray is god i pray that i'm healthy spiritually mentally financially emotionally i want i want to be healthy in all areas it don't matter if i'm going out about in the world and my soul feel dirty it takes me a while to kick back in like i don't know it just it just be something different see that's getting off that green and going to that red yeah that's dope. That's yeah. dope. If, if yeah. you are healthy in all them spaces, there's nowhere to go but up. But up. That's why when you when I tell you you speak life, I'm I appreciate you so much because oh, I don't we're I, we I'm gonna get we're gonna get closer if we if we stay on this path, we're gonna be closer to each other and I'm gonna mm. feed you and we you're gonna feed are. me. <laughs> No if you gotta get that if that trying out of out of I your know, vocabulary. Right? You, you gotta get it out of there. Right, let me write this down. <laughs> you gotta get it out of there. Okay. Um, Tom, can you please go to the chat? Lupus together, New Jersey. Hello, how are you doing? Thank you so so much for tuning in. Oh, I would love Jersey. to be a guest as I am a lupus warrior and have a nonprofit organization Ooh. in New Jersey. Yeah. Please do inbox me so we can set something up. I think I sent you a message as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's dope. I love that y'all reach. Um, you reaching? No, like um, this is for me. Um, this is for me to do. This is for us to do, and we want to reach as many people around the world nationwide, UK, everywhere around the world, just to get them some hope, a little bit of something that you guys can take from one of these podcast, podcast episodes that can uplift your spirit in each and every way as possible. I want to thank you again so much for coming on here. We definitely need to do a part two <laughs> because it's so much more to talk about lupus yeah. and relationships, right? I it's agree. so much to talk about. And I want to learn so much more about you. And I want to share with the world what your journey is like. So yeah. we definitely is going to be doing a part two with Desi, right? Okay. Desi, please tell them where they can find you and your upcoming events on all platforms. So my Facebook, let me just open it up because I feel like I would be lying to y'all. Um, my Facebook is Desi Ray, D E Z I space R A E. Um, my Instagram, it used to be Desi Lynn, but let me just look now. <laughs> Desi, I'll be changing my name, y'all. Desi with two eyes underscore Grant. So Desi Grant on Instagram. Um, I'm also on what else am I on LinkedIn? I don't really be on LinkedIn too much. I need to. People keep telling me, like, you need to get on here. Get on here. This is where it's like Facebook professional. So you do. Yeah, I need to. You do. So to that, do that's that. going to be part two, you guys. <laughs> so remember, every question holds the potential for growth and self-discovering. Until next time. Bye. bye. Thank you for having me. You are awesome. You. you are awesome. No, Thank you, you are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You are, you are welcome. It was easy. Yeah. It was easy.